how do you get started with programming? To answer this question, I travel all the way to Kyoto, which, to be fair, is not that far from here. There, I met with Will. Will's a computer science student and a fellow game developer. He's also a good at user. He's been learning programming, like all of you, and so he's got a few insights to share in that regard. I didn't go all the way to Kyoto just for that. We could have just made a Skype call, but you would have missed on a handsome host and a few shots from an absolutely beautiful city. We're going to get on the topic, but first, say hi to Kyoto. Hey everyone, welcome to Kyoto. Today we're going to talk about how to get started with programming. Not about which language, which technology to pick, because depending on your goals, there are many different paths you can take. I will recommend Python, and I explain why in a long article, but what's most important when you're getting started is learning how to take control of your computer, how to give it instructions, how to write code that other human beings can read or that your future self can understand, and learning how to build things. Not necessarily learning what to build or with which technology. So to get started, I recommend the Python programming language. Python is multi-platform, it allows you to create programs to take control of your computer. You will find excellent interactive tools, sandboxed environments like Codecademy that allows you to get started right now. You don't have to install anything, you just work from your browser. But more importantly, Python has a vivid community. A lot of people use it around the world and you will find excellent resources compared to other programming languages like JavaScript where the quality of tutorials is all over the place. Thanks to that, the style of tutorials and the way you write Python code is fairly consistent. People already came up with some of the best ways you can write Python for you, meaning it makes your learning journey much easier because a lot of really popular programs that have lots of learning resources like Python, JavaScript, C++ and all, they are feature-packed. They evolve over time and they can do almost too many things for you, making them really hard to learn if you don't find proper guidance. So you can use Python to build command line programs to build tools like I have one to generate invoices for GDQuest, for example. You can also use it with 3D programs and in general, Python is the language of choice for plugins in computer graphics. You can use it to write plugins for Krita. I do that for Blender. You can use it also for the asset pipeline for games. Even if there are no games or very few made in Python, the tools around the game, the tools to take the assets into the game engine and to manage a bunch of build tasks and all that stuff are very often in Python. Even in the official Godot repository, you will find some tools written in Python and Godot's GDScript, its own programming language, although it's not Python, it has a similar syntax, so it's fairly easy to move from one language to the next. There are a few things you need to do if you want to get good at programming to learn fast. The first tip is to code every day. Set aside 20 minutes, 30 minutes or more as you get more comfortable with it where you focus on your programming. You can use something like Codecademy, then you can start writing your own programs. There's a fairly popular article I recommend that you read from the creator of jQuery who explains he wasn't making that much progress on his personal projects as a developer, he got into the habit of coding every single day, committing code to GitHub, and with that he managed to make a lot of progress and get where he wanted to go. 
You may be wondering, why should I start with? You want to not focus on what to create, but how you create things. My recommendation, especially in game development, is that you start with base courses, the basics, Code Academy, something like that, just to get sense for the syntax, for the language's features, and to have some vocabulary you can then use to search on Google, so that way you can find more resources, more tutorials. But once you've done that, my recommendation is pick something you want to do. Pick something you're motivated about, even if it's a bit big, because at first, when you don't have a lot of experience, you can't scope projects right. Some people will tell you to start with something simple, but you don't really know what's simple until you've written a bunch of programs. Pick something that you are interested in, and then you break it down. You break it down in the smallest components. Let's take an example with games. You want to make a platformer. You need to create levels, monsters, you you want to have some UI maybe on the character, some score system and all. Take each of these components and make it a separate small project. The first thing should be, I want to have a character and I want it to move. No animation, nothing. Just want it to move, to collide with the ground, maybe with walls. Do the same thing for the score, do the same thing for AI, make the simplest AI you can and start building from that. And as you move forward, you can combine these elements together. I also recommend balancing tutorials, especially step-by-step -step tutorials, with practice, experimentation, trying to apply what you learned. It's extremely important because the learning happens when you struggle to solve problems. You want to stay accountable. This is something that works for me on GDQuest, like it made a big difference. You want other people to be able to check on your work. And for that, you can upload your code to something like GitHub, where other people can check that post on social networks, be part of a community, and especially something like a Discord chat or a Slack channel, something where you can get in touch directly with other people every day. And peer programming, going to meetups, meeting in real life with other developers is also very important because you can ask them tips, you can see their progress. This will motivate you to keep working on your own project. If you can find a local event, a free camp or a boot camp where you can just gather up with people, ask them questions, get some feedback on your work. And if you can get some of that warmth or the sense of community, this will really help you keep going. With the sense of community, you can also get pair programming, having someone to code with on a given project. And I highly recommend that, working with someone who's more experienced than you and who will give you tasks to work on and review your code. This is something you can get for free, along with great mentorship, contributing to open source projects. On GD Quest, anyone who contributes code, for example, I will personally review their code, give them some feedback, and try to help them write better code as well. By the way, there's some project coming related to game development that's open source as part of GD Quest. I'll keep you posted on that. In general, find an open source project that you're interested in, something you want to fix, something you want to add some new feature on. This can be a plugin for a program that you use. This can be a program in itself. Get in touch with the developers and start messing with the code. By reading code, you will get much better at understanding how programming works by seeing how other people write code as well. You will learn a lot. The job of a developer is, well, it's said that you spend roughly 90% of the time reading code. When you use a game engine, for example, you have lots of tools, lots of classes, lots of methods, yet you have to read, you have to go through the documentation to understand how they work. Nothing's magical. Developers have to be very patient with that. That's part of your daily job. When you are working in a team, you get to read even more more code because your work will interact with the work other developers in your team. Makes sense. You will have to read their code, they will have to read your code to use it. More importantly, you will have to read your own code you wrote six months ago, one year ago. You will do that a lot more than actually writing.
So we have Will here, our rock star computer science student. He's been a Godot user and <laughs> he's a game developer. He's still a student, but it doesn't matter really. Now the floor's for you, Will. Tell us how we learn how to code. All right, now that the floor is mine, um, the first thing you need to do is destroy all your enemies, kill everyone in your path. <laughs> Leave them no quarter. <laughs> These are more general tips. They apply to coding just as well as they apply to any other topic. One of the most important things is to define success as low as possible. When you define success as creating an entire game, it's very easy to get demotivated and to lose. For example, when exercising, I define success as walking into the gym. You need to still do the exercise, but once you define success very low, it's easy to get started. This can be anything like coding for five minutes a day, just turning the computer on and sitting in front of the keyboard. That can be success for you. No matter what you do, so long as you get started and you can do work, it doesn't matter how you define the success. The second just as important thing is to get in a little practice every day. This is why things like just five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day is very important. It's best to focus on what's relevant to your project. Especially when you're first learning something, you want to spend time on what's most relevant to you. Breaking down the problem into smaller parts can make insurmountable problems easier to accomplish. For example, working on a role-playing game project, you see this huge battle system. There's like a battle system, there's characters, like where do I start, what do I do? You need to break down the problems into smaller parts. So, okay, a battle system has characters and characters have stats and stats are strength, dexterity, they have skills, HP. So you just break big problems into smaller problems and smaller and smaller and smaller until each problem becomes one line of code. Something like that. Do you know what the outro is? What's the outro again? I... Can you hold that for me? Mm -hmm. Like in this direction? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's it! Thank you kindly for watching, be sure to subscribe to the channel to read the guide in the video description. Be creative, have fun, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.